This is a Volkswagen R32 that's been converted to a Volkswagen Scirocco, which was never sold here in the United States. I don't normally review modified cars, but this is a tremendously interesting and special one. So today I made an exception. I'm going to review this crazy Volkswagen and show you all of its many quirks and features. Before I get started, big news, this Volkswagen Scirocco is currently for sale and it's being auctioned live on cars and bids. This is so cool. Like I said, we didn't get the Scirocco here in the United States, but this one is here and it's legal. I will explain. And it has some upgrades that you couldn't get in the Scirocco even where it was officially sold and you can buy it on cars and bids. So once you finish watching this, this video, click the link in the description below to visit the live auction for this Volkswagen Scirocco where you can bid on it and buy it only on cars and bids. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of this R32 Scirocco situation with a little discussion of what the Scirocco is for my North American viewers who may not know this car. Then I will get into why this is here and how. But first, let's talk Scirocco. So if you're a Volkswagen fan, you probably know the Scirocco was a sporty model they made throughout the late 1970s and the 1980s. And in the United States, that's where it ended. The Corrado came out in 1990, replaced the Scirocco, and that was it. But in foreign markets, particularly Europe, the Scirocco name was resurrected almost 20 years later for a car that we didn't get here in the US. It was like a Volkswagen Golf, but sportier, more exciting, more interesting. Same chassis, a lot of the same mechanicals, but a cooler design. It was sort of like how Volkswagen had the CC here in the United States, and that was a sportier version of the Passat. Well, this was the same thing for the Golf, just a sportier, cooler model that they didn't give us here in the States. Now, this reborn Scirocco came out in 2008. So you're probably wondering, how is this here? Even the very oldest one is only 15 years old, which doesn't meet the 25 year threshold to import most vehicles to North America. How did it get in? As you can imagine, that's an interesting story. The owner of this car bought a Scirocco in Europe and then started pulling stuff out of it. The engine, the drivetrain, some interior parts, all sorts of stuff came out of it, enough so that he could import it to the United States as parts, which it technically was. It wasn't a running and driving vehicle at that point since so much had been removed. Of course, there's no 25 year age limit on importing parts. So it was shipped here as parts. Then the owner took his 2008 Volkswagen R32. That's the Mark V R32, the V6 powered model that preceded the Golf R. He took that car and the body of the Scirocco that he had imported and he brought them both to HPA Motorsports in Canada where the process of joining them began. And the result is this. A US spec, US model Volkswagen R32 provides provides all the running gear, the V6 engine, the dual clutch transmission, the all wheel drive system. It all comes out of the R32 and then the Scirocco body goes on top. Now, surprisingly, it all just bolts right up, fits in place more or less because the Scirocco was built on the Mark V Golf platform. So not many modifications were needed to make this happen, except for the all wheel drive system. The fuel tank had to be modified to accommodate the different to allow for all wheel drive. And that's because this Scirocco is actually better than the one that Volkswagen made. You see, Volkswagen created the Scirocco as a fun alternative to the Golf, but they never went to R32 levels of performance. They never offered this car with a V6, which this one has, and they never offered it with all wheel drive. All the Scirocco's were front wheel drive, but since this car has the R32 drivetrain, it's the V6 all wheel drive Scirocco that Volkswagen never made. The best one that came out of the factory was a front wheel drive model with a turbo four cylinder that maxed out at about 275 horsepower. This went beyond that thanks to the R32 upgrades. 
And this car has been modified well beyond that point, upgraded past just sticking R32 running gear in a standard Scirocco. The biggest change comes under the hood, where upgraded turbochargers deliver significantly more power. So this car has a bigger engine than a regular Scirocco and even more power beyond that. And with more power comes other modifications. The transmission has been upgraded to add clutch discs and have some tuning in order to strengthen it and make it more reliable to handle all this extra power. This car also has KW coilover suspension for better handling now that you're going a lot faster, and it has bigger brakes. In fact, the brakes on this Scirocco R32 hybrid, they come from an Audi RS6 to increase its stopping power. And of course, if you go bigger brakes, you gotta go bigger wheels to accommodate them. So you can see BBS wheels, which look nice and fit the design of this car. So the result is that this Scirocco large largely presents as stock, but it's been upgraded well, well beyond that with the R32 engine, all-wheel drive system, and even more power beyond that point. Now, HPA Motorsports in Canada, the ones who built this car, they wanted to build more of these, maybe a dozen or so, but the owner of this car isn't sure if they ever actually executed another one. This might be the only one, there might be a couple, but regardless, it is tremendously special and uncommon. The owner also told me it took HPA about a year to build this car, dial it in, get it completely right, plus more time spent with shipping, getting the body over here, dealing with customs since it came in as parts. It was not an easy build to get this to happen. But anyway, next up, onto the rest of the quirks and features of this Spar 32 Scirocco mashup. I gotta say, it's not as quirky as you might think, given the uniqueness of this build, and that is by design. The owner of this car wanted a Scirocco, not some crazy modded thing. The cool thing is that this is a Scirocco, so he wanted to go for an OEM, OEM Plus kind of look and feel of this car, and it is that. So when you walk up, the key is just a standard Volkswagen key. You open the door and you can see a standard Volkswagen door car. No crazy mods like some people might do with this car. And inside, it's the same deal. No crazy modifications. In fact, it's pretty basic in here like most Scirocco's were. A lot of these were sold as inexpensive cars to people who liked the practicality of a Golf but wanted something a little more exciting. This was that. So this car doesn't even have a sunroof. In fact, it has manual seats, forward, backward, up, down. All the adjustments are manual, even in this cool car. Speaking of the seats, though, I should point out I like the mesh pattern on them. It seems kind of sporty and cool and exciting, and they're surprisingly well bolstered. This was, after all, the sporty version of the Golf, and so the seats give that sporty feel. Now, to further underscore the point that the owner of this car wanted an OEM look and feel in this Scirocco, Everything in here works as it should, which you don't often see in the cases of full engine transmission swap situations. To make the point, the screen in the gauge cluster, you open the door and it shows a door open. All that stuff was wired correctly. Same deal with the infotainment screen. It all works like you'd want. Radio, phone, all those connections, they all work. One giveaway here though, the navigation system seems to think we're in Germany, but at least turns on, shows the map, and works works reasonably well. Same deal with the climate controls. All hooked up properly, all works just like it should. Heated seats, air conditioning, defrost on the windshield, it all works great. There's nothing in this interior that would really tell you that this is anything other than a stock Scirocco, which is kind of the cool thing about it. With that said, one interesting climate control related giveaway, you can see the readouts are in Celsius. So that gives you an idea that this car wasn't specifically built for the US market. And there's a few other little giveaways throughout. For instance, to the left of the steering wheel, this unlabeled silver button is a lift system. So you're driving around, you want this car low, you can do that. But if you need to clear a speed bump or a steep driveway, you push that silver button and the lift brings it up to give you more standard ground clearance. Also, this little storage cubby to the left of the steering wheel, you open it and there's a little screen controller in there. It's giving you some performance info like boost PSI. Obviously, that is 
is not stock, but it's hidden away. So again, OEM Plus. You wouldn't really know it's there unless you go looking for it. Otherwise, you're just sitting in a Scirocco. And frankly, with that in mind, I cannot explain enough how not ratty this build is. I get in a lot of modified cars, and they've often got this weird creaker rattle, that dashboard warning light on, whatever it is. This is not like that at all. It feels like this is how this car was built new. It's quite impressive. But moving on to the back seats, yes, the Scirocco has them, although as you can see, they're pretty tight, especially from a headroom perspective. But that was kind of the point of this car. If you needed real practical usable back seats, you would have gotten the standard Golf. The Scirocco was for people who wanted to go sporty and still have back seats for occasional use. Two interesting things about the back seats. Number one, I love that the headrests are see-through. What a brilliant piece of design. If you don't have anyone sitting in back, you look in the rear view mirror, you can see right through the headrests and it doesn't really obstruct your rear visibility. And of course, if you bought this car, you probably wouldn't have people in the back most of the time and so that's a fantastic idea those see-through headrests in the days before rear view cameras that was a great way to maximize your rear visibility the other interesting thing is the seats are pretty sporty you can see the mesh pattern in the center just like up front and they're pretty heavily bolstered so if you wanted to take rear passengers on the racetrack with you they're not exactly gt3 sports seats but they're better than i would expect from a relatively simple volkswagen scirocco but anyway Next, we move on to the cargo area in this Scirocco R32 situation. To get back here, you push a button on the key fob like you would in any other Volkswagen hatchback. Push it, and then it pops open, and you can lift it up. Or there's a switch in the driver's door panel that you can pull, and that will also open the tailgate. But you open it up and discover, well the cargo area. Nothing particularly interesting or unusual at first glance. You can see it's smaller than what you'd get in a normal Golf. And again, that was kind of the point of this car. If you needed all the practicality and storage space of a Golf, you got one. If you wanted something more sporty and cool, it still had some of that practicality, that was the Scirocco. And by the way, if you did need more space, you could fold down the back seats, which would give you a larger cargo area back here. But the other interesting thing, lift up the cargo floor and you can see two items one is the battery with a battery tender connected to it not all that unusual the other is a tank of fluid this is water methanol it's here to cool the charge from the air intake since we upgraded the turbochargers this will help this car deliver its big power then on the outside well it's gorgeous. This revived 2000s, 2010s version of the Scirocco is a beautiful car. I've always felt tremendously attractive. They took the Golf, a fairly normal pedestrian, regular vehicle, and made it cool and made it head-turning. It was designed by Walter De Silva, who also did the Audi R8, but this is another one of his greatest hits. This car has always looked cool. Now, regular plebeians may confuse it with the Volkswagen. Volkswagen Golf, or frankly, some other Volkswagen hatchback. It has some similar design cues, but there were just enough updates made to this car to transform it into something better looking, something cooler, something special. And every time I'm in Europe and I see one of these things driving around, I think to myself, how cool would it be to get behind the wheel and check out that more interesting Golf, the Scirocco? And now, in this rather unusual way, I get to do just that. All right, driving the R32 Scirocco situation. Now, in case you're curious, this is titled as an R32, and it gets into like an existential discussion about what is a car? Is it the engine, the powertrain, the drivetrain, the transmission, or is it the body? What makes a car? But in this case, um, the title is for the R32 donor car, and that's also one of the VIN labels on the door. You have both there, the Scirocco and the R32, but when Texas titled this car and they did the inspection with the sheriff to you know, get it registered, they put the VIN label on for the R32, so that's in the door jam and on the title. So let's talk driving experience. Now, this car, like I've mentioned, has been heavily modified from a stock Scirocco or a stock R32. So this video is not really gonna be informative of what like a general concept of this car is. That's one of the reasons I generally don't shoot modified cars. But when I saw this 
come through at Cars and Bids, I was like, I have to shoot that. It is so cool. And it's gonna be a decade before I can shoot another Scirocco. So let's do this one. Now this car is tremendously well set up. In fact, if I was going to modify something, I'm not a big modified car person, but if I was going to, I would modify it just like this. It's got a lot of extra power, but it isn't just power that was stuck on this car. They did the brakes, they did the suspension, they did bigger wheels and tires. I mean, it's all the stuff. It's like the whole package. It's like what an automaker would do if they were creating a performance model. Now, this car has the dual clutch automatic transmission. I believe all of the R32s from this generation had that. The benefit is it can take this big power, especially with the upgrades that were done to the transmission to make it more friendly for this level of power. The other cool thing about this car and the modifications done to it, it's not annoying. I told the owner this is the least janky car build that I've ever been a part of. And I really mean that. Like, usually you get into a, a build like this, a swap, an engine, transmission, all that. And the person says, all right, look, there's three warning lights on in the dashboard, but you know, one of them, that, that doesn't mean anything. They ignore that. And another one, it'll go away when the car warms up and all this stuff. It's just, you know, this car really feels and looks and drives like it was like this. And that's nice. Now, the cool thing about this car, the Scirocco had a slightly lower center of gravity, just a lower body in general uh, than the Golf. And then this car's on coilovers, so you got kind of this lower car that's lowered further with better suspension, and it drives great. It handles just stupendously well. It gets a little bit of wheel hop in the corners. It's probably a little more power than I personally would have put in the car, but it goes around corners fantastically. Very little body roll. The steering could, of course, be a little quicker. That was just a reality of cars in this era. It's very tight. It feels very tight. It goes around the corner quickly. It is quite an impressive car in in terms of the way it feels on the road. It really has a lot of grip and it really gives you a feeling of solidity that frankly, I wasn't really expecting. And frankly, Volkswagens in the 2010s didn't really give you, I had a 2012 Jetta, I remember. It wasn't like this. This car really does feel like it has just a lot of torque and power. At any part of the rev range, you just step on it and whoo, you are gone, gone, gone. It really, really goes. But this car is just really well built. It's like well dialed in. It, it's what would happen if someone with money went to a tuning shop and was like, here's what I want as a whole picture car. Like, this is the goal I have. Can we do that? Rather than like, all right, I have, I have eight grand today. What can we throw on to make it faster? <laughs> That's how most Tudor cars are built. This one was built as much more of clearly with much more attention to like creating a full car. And that's what it is. So in my mind, you got two really cool things here. You got a Scirocco, which is just awesome. In the States, you drive this to any Volkswagen meet, you take this to H2OI, you're not even gonna get pulled over in Ocean City. The cops are gonna be like, yeah! <laughs> nah, they'll pull you over. But, uh, <laughs> but it would be a huge hit. Like this car would just turn everybody's head. Because in the community, everybody knows what this is and knows we didn't get it and always kind of wanted it. Then you also have an actually pretty fun to drive car, like a good, enjoyable driver's car um, because of the way that this car was tuned and because of the drivetrain that went in it. And I'm surprised at how really a lot of fun it is, even apart from just the fact that it's this crazy car we never got in the States. It's a really, really cool build and I'm thrilled we're gonna have the chance to sell it on cars and bids. No idea what this thing is worth, but if someone is really into Volkswagens and wants like a nicely dialed, very head turning, different type of car, this is definitely that. And so that's the Volkswagen Scirocco slash R32. This is a tremendously cool car. It's interesting to finally get behind the wheel of a Scirocco, which I've always lusted after. And it has some upgrades you couldn't even get in a Scirocco, which makes it better. And frankly, it's just awesome to see all the work that went into this very special build. And you can buy it on cars and bids. Anyway, now it's time to give this Scirocco a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 56 out of 100, which places the Scirocco R32 mashup here against some sort of similar cars, although really nothing is that similar to this. The Scirocco wins this group, but it should. It's got big power thanks to its modifications, and its cool factor is much higher than others since it's likely the only one in the States. And it's reasonably practical too, as long as it stays reliable. This is a seriously cool car that I very much enjoyed, and it would be a smash hit at any VW gathering where people might look at it and think, wait a second, that doesn't look like a golf.